Uh, hello, I am Mark Zackham. I am a senior hardware design engineer at Innovonics. My presentation today is going to be showing you guys my work with 3D Experience and the software CSD Studio. So Innovonics, uh, we're a wireless company uh, and basically what we do is we de deliver like uh, effective and uh, flexible wireless solutions for security, senior care, sub-metering and commercial monitoring and commercial fire markets. Uh, our wireless is known to be bulletproof and uh, reliable, and uh, with the use of uh, CST Studio, it only gets better with the way we design our RF products. So my personal use with 3D Experience in my workflow. Currently, as of now, I am the main RF design engineer of this company. Uh, we are growing really fast though, and we're gonna be adding on more and more uh, engineers, but uh, what I'll be continuing with forward is my personal use and workflow with this with this uh, program and software and how that will help once we expand when we get more engineers. Uh, I basically, what I love about 3D Experience the most is the fact that it's not node locked or VPN locked to any computer or anything. The only thing I need is my login, so email and password, and I can basically work anywhere I want to, whether it's on my work computer, my PC, or if I need to work remote from another state, I can access this software wherever I want. And uh, another huge benefit about this is that with CST Studio Online, we get 16 online cores for simulations. And there's a simulation manager that's built into the 3D experience where you can start and run these projects. And this is incredible. Let's say you're working on a project that, let's say you're on a, uh, really an, an ultra thin uh, uh, computer to where it doesn't have much processing power, you can offload a bunch of uh, your simulations designs to these 16 cores online and still get your work done. So the flexibility is incredible and it allows for real proper design engineering wherever I am. And I've already uh, taken advantage of it more times than I can count. Uh, another thing I love is, is the way at all my designs can be stored on, on this platform as well. Uh, whenever I need anything, I know that I have it all stored. And what, what Randy showed us uh, uh, begin in the beginning of where you can access all that kind of stuff and everything. So that's what I use as my main way of showing all my revisions of all my antenna designs. I have them all in different folders for different projects. I can retrieve them from anywhere I need to. And if I wanna see these designs or anyone else wants to see these designs, all they need is access to my account, like the login, and they'll be able to view whatever they need. As we expand to get more engineers, we, we can add more people onto our Innovonics account, and then anyone can access later on what I have designed and used uh, if they wanna do further revisions or just uh, take a look at it. And now for my exact experience with CST, Studio and 3D Experience. So as I said, I'm a hardware design engineer, but my main focus for the past nine months has just been with RF design. So I design antennas, I design uh, filtering solutions, I design everything we need to worry about for RF. And we have a lot of weird cases that we have to deal with that before CST Studio would be impossible to predict. Uh, our old methods used to be just really senior RF engineers who have seen it all. So they have really good practices, a lot of trial and error, a lot of revisions to get it right. But with the software, I'm able to basically drop our revisions down from eight uh, RF design revisions to maybe two or three. Uh, the picture to the right is one example. I was designing an antenna that should work in a four by four metal box conduit that goes into a wall. Without this software, I don't think it would have been possible to even come up with an original idea to get this started. This was an extremely complicated antenna that took 50 to 100 hours of research and design and prototyping to get right. But this software made that possible. Uh, this, is, this was something that couldn't be done with just simply testing in the lab and making something out of nothing. So I was able to design and model with the metal box, with a plastic enclosure, with exact spacings, with uh, uh, with wh whatever we needed, I was able to put in this and get a 
close to real life result as much as I could expect. And um, what you're seeing in that photo is actually the far field result. And I, and I have a video showing different things that we can see and what those outputs actually mean to us. But uh, this gives, the far field result gives us an amazing idea of how we expect this antenna to radiate. Why this is important? If our antenna is directional, as you see in this photo, we have a lot of direction going up and down. We'll know better on how to position it, uh, how, it how we need to uh, have it set up for testing in-house and FCC. It, it gives us such a huge view into something that would take way more hours and care to test in the real world. So at least we can always start with the uh, on the ground running. This is a side view. The, what you saw before was a different frequency band. This is another frequency band, and you can see how different far field results uh, result in, in different views. So I can see that with that specific frequency band, I get a very directional forward output, and that gives us a fantastic idea of what we're trying to work with. It also gives me a great idea of how the metal box is affecting this antenna and how it's uh, how we use that to decide whether the antenna can actually work in this enclosure or not. Another super helpful tool is looking at the EM field, so especially electric field. Uh, the feed of the antenna is down here, and we get a really good idea of how and where the antenna is radiating. The point of this for me is to find any hot spots that I don't want. So wherever you see uh, peaks of red, where maybe it's undesirable, it gives me a great idea of where I might have coupling that I don't want to uh, that I want to get rid of. I might have two things that are too close to each other that are causing an interaction I wouldn't like. So this view helps a ton with the design process to make sure that I'm not designing something that could cause a negative effect in the output later on. And this program literally it shows you everything. You can see everything between S parameters to electric field, magnetic field, and far field. So everything for antenna design, it's incredible. It, and that's only one piece of the puzzle to the software, but that's what I've been mainly focused on in a while. But we can dive into other stuff later. Um, this is another example of an antenna I made, and this has a different setup. So this antenna is placed in a plastic box and is designed to work when it's mounted on drywall. Most antennas detune whenever they're near any different materials. Uh, depending on the material, it changes the way the antenna detunes. So I could have totally just designed this antenna normally, but the problem would be that if I designed it to the frequency I wanted to, and then it got placed in the box and placed in the drywall, it could have completely shifted to a point where the antenna is now out of band and would not work for what I needed to. With CSC Studio, I was able to first design the antenna and then place a plastic box around it, tune it accordingly, then place it on drywall, tune that accordingly, and able to get an antenna that detunes perfectly when it's in its closure and in its state of functioning to make sure that we get the right output every time. Uh, all these antennas I've made in real life, and once you get the modeling and the, your materials down, the results are very close to real life, and it's really nice to see. This is another cool example of the electric fields and what we see to expect. Where we see the hot spots of red is where exactly I expect them to see. If I saw them anywhere else on any corners that maybe I didn't like too much, I would go and change that. We can see how that affects the drywall and the plastic box around it. Um, and, and what you're seeing now are pretty rough models. I just make estimates of exact sizing of the enclosure and everything. However, you can upload any complex 3D model from SolidWorks and, and uh, these programs have a direct correlation between them. You wouldn't have to uh, import it. It could be a direct transfer through 3D experience from SolidWorks to CST. And I will show an example of that with my last antenna. So this antenna was this really ambitious antenna. Uh, we call them billboards because they're sticking up out, outside of the board. Uh, these radiate at one frequency, and um, these are these antennas have to be right. They they have extremely close proximity to the plastic enclosure, 
which would detune the antenna. They're also in uh, a crossed um, uh, style. So that is something you have to account for. The way they are accessed and turned on and off are different. So that's something that I had to model and make sure things are correct about as well. Um, this was a super interesting project. Gave us so much information while in the design process through the software to really know what we're expecting. And also it tests fitment. I can design for fitment to make sure that whatever I'm making actually works with our actual product. Uh, here is a short video. Just this is like eye candy to me, but you can see where the antennas are radiating, how it's affecting the board on the bottom. The invisible structure that you're seeing on outside is the exact 3D model of our company's enclosure. I just I I got it straight from SolidWorks into CST. It has every hole, every measurement, everything exact as our mechanical engineers designed in CST, so we can get a perfect outlook on how our antennas are gonna. Uh, perform in our real enclosures. And as you can see, I now made it fully um, uh, visible. So, so it can get as, compl uh, as complex as you want or as simple as you want with how you want to model or design things. But we get an awesome look on what we're trying to expect and see out of the products we're redesigning or making from scratch. It's really cool. It's something that I've loved doing and Implementing this in my workflow has, even though things take hundreds of hours, it saves hundreds of hours. So in, instead of eight revisions over the course of a year and a half, we're doing two to three revisions over the course of uh, three to six months. And that is a big difference. And not only that, we probably get better performance out of those antennas because we have a deeper understanding of what we're looking at with seeing the theoretical before real. Now, in real life, RF, there's a reason why we call it black magic. It never really is exact with calculations, but to get within a proper a ballpark every time changes the game. And this is what we see uh, with this implementation. And that's basically it. I, I just wanted to go through an overview with how I use 3D Experience in CST Studio for my workflow and why this platform has really changed the way that I view RF engineering in total. Before this, I was using uh, maybe some free softwares or some scripting here and there, but we mostly, we'd run a quick prototype, put it in the lab, see that it's completely wrong, do some hours and hours in the lab tuning and cutting and, and stripping away. But this, this has saved quite a bit of time doing that. And I found that I do way less crazy in-depth lab work and now it's more validating because of this software uh that's it for me if you guys have any questions i can't see them but they'll let me know what you say and uh, i'm happy to answer anything you have i've got a question hey, that was you, great mark. mark um oh go ahead randy yeah is the the software you're using the cst studio is it a cloud app that runs fully in the cloud or is it an app that part of it needs to be installed Oh, that's a great question. No, it does need to be installed. Uh, the cloud part would be the online 16 cores to run simulations, and that generates an output file that you then upload, uh, that you then open within the onboard uh, software. But how you get set up is you sign up, uh, you sign on into 3D Experience, and then you can put this in your favorites tab. You'll see CST Studio. You click it and it will guide you through the install process. All the install happens within the online application uh, to get it onto your computer. So basically, when I was talking about having this on my laptop, any other device, you do have to go through the download process, but you only need to do that once, and then you can jump from computer to computer to computer and use the software wherever you need. 